We're here at the Prospect SV event innovation and one of the innovative panels is on connected cars and so forth. Brian Doherty, you're with MEMA, yes. and we'll talk about MEMA in a moment, but first, uh, one of the things we just spoke of, we just heard of, uh, was the whole idea of what keeps you awake at night. So tell us, what keeps you awake at night? Well, one of the areas we're actively involved in uh, working with our members is cybersecurity, so vehicle cybersecurity. Obviously, as vehicles get more connected, get more automated features, cybersecurity becomes uh, a bigger consideration in the design of those systems. So we're involved with, you know, over-the-air update, uh, you know, encrypted technologies to, you know, update system software on vehicles, um, also involved with vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle, uh, connectivity, so 5.9 gigahertz DSRC that will essentially use security certificates to ensure that the transmissions coming between vehicles are from valid, valid users on the road. Well, and one of the concerns that people brought up were the idea, what, what if you have a rogue DSRC, some kid at the side of the road hacking it? Right. So we had a great panel discussion today here at the Prospect Silicon Valley event with, here at Microsoft. Um, that, that always is a consideration, just like it is with, with hacking today uh, on you know, your PCs or things. Uh, one of the beauties of the DSRC system is that it has limited range. So it's 300 to 500 meter range. So you know, for someone to sit on the side of a highway, they may be able to essentially initiate a warning on a vehicle, but these vehicles are not gonna be taking actions based on a radio signal alone. So, and just to give people a little background, uh, the dedicated short range communications or DSRC system essentially transmits um, your location data, speed, and your path data to the surrounding vehicles. So, essentially the car, your car, is able to see the other cars around it and know exactly where they are in all weather conditions. So, it's a, it's a very uh, unique technology in that it works in all weather conditions. You have definitive knowledge of where that car is uh, around you and you can kind of build up that map within the ECU of the vehicle so uh, to avoid collisions. Well and as you point out it is a complement to other things whether it be radar, LIDAR, or visual cameras, right? Correct. So to answer your question really, you know, if a hacker sitting on the side of the road or someone's trying to spoof a system, they might be able to initiate a warning but really these systems have their most value when you get a warning from a vehicle that's stopped in the road ahead or slamming on their brakes uh, down the road ahead of you that you may not be able to see but now as your radar system or your camera systems start to perceive that something's stopping in front of you, that combines combined with the additional knowledge that you have that somebody said, yes, I am stopping in front of me, um, now together with that data fusion, um, you're able to take action. So it's essentially sensor fusion um, of different layers of information you're getting from either your onboard sensors or from those uh, that DSRC. Well, and DSRC has been around for a while in terms of its baking and so forth, but you also have the 5G coming about. And right. that, there was a little bit of discussion of the back and forth of how those two play together. Yeah, so I think, you know, DSRC, from, from those in the industry that have really worked with it, the system was designed from the ground up. It's essentially a Wi-Fi based system for cars that's designed to have very low latency. Each car transmits essentially its position and path information 10 times a second, so 10 hertz, uh, to the surrounding vehicles. It's got about a 300 to 500 meter range. When you talk about 5G or even today, which is essentially the extension of today's LTE or 4G systems, you know, you're, you're talking through cellular towers and that process of kind of making that handshake, talking to the tower, then talking to another vehicle takes a lot more time than you have to do collision avoidance type warnings and or active, you know, uh, collision mitigation type systems. I think you're, you're going to see really uh, a knitting together of these technologies so that you know, you've, the low latency things, the collision avoidance will be handled by V to V and the active sensors on the vehicle. Slightly longer range things like traffic congestion, uh, other things will be handled by the LTE and 5G systems of the future. So I think the systems will work very well together. And really the DSRC systems will probably use uh, LTE and 5G to do updates to the systems, uh, potentially for security certificate management and updates. Um, so I think we're going to see a lot of synergies really between the technology. So I don't think it's an either or choice. I think it's really a working together using the best aspects of both technologies um, for the vehicle. And you talked about the idea of air gaps within the systems, right? Yes. yes. So, you know, as we, we design systems to be secure by design, in the future. Essentially, I think you're going to 
companies are looking at how isolated do certain systems need to be, such as the steering, braking, throttle control systems. Obviously, your infotainment system needs to be fully connected in a lot of different ways. Some of the other systems need to get data from within the vehicle buses, but um, you know, companies are looking at locking down those systems uh, much better so that, that they're there's not the chance that a hacker could potentially get in through an attack surface or an unknown attack surface that exists maybe in the future um, into those systems. One of the things that we kind of danced around is this whole idea of the ubiquity of it. How, how do you roll this out in such a way that there's enough of them to have critical mass to actually make a difference? Well, and that's, that's a great question, Ken. Um, the, really, the, the only way you can get uh, a community-based system, which is what this V2V really is, is you need to have lots of vehicles that have it. The first vehicle that has a system on it, it's basically worthless to that, that car. Um, so you really need to have a, a wide penetration, and in order to have it valuable, you need to have that penetration very quickly, which is the reason that NHTSA has taken this step of with their notice of proposed rulemaking or NPRM that they came out with in the December, January timeframe of saying, hey, we believe that this is the next generation of automotive safety system. And because of that, we plan to mandate this on vehicles sold in the United States because that gets the penetration rate up to a high level combined with aftermarket systems that could be incentivized by insurance companies, uh, things like that. Because V2V is actually fairly easy to add to a vehicle from an aftermarket standpoint. So. You know, when you get up to, you know, kind of the 5 to 10% range, you start seeing real value from the systems. Um, but you can't really count on it until, you know, for a collision avoidance until basically all the vehicles in the, in the fleet have that. And that's going to take quite a while. But there's going to be a, an increasing value curve as more and more vehicles have this technology. Well, it seems like as you drive those volumes, the cost is going to come down. And it seems like that would lower the cost for the infrastructure part of it, right? Correct. You know, these systems actually are starting out at a pretty low cost. They're essentially two-way radios. So, you know, the add-on cost from an aftermarket or an OEM installed system is actually fairly reasonable for the type of information you get. Um, then I think, as, as we discussed uh, with the panel, um, you're going to see cities and states looking at their accident data for their worst intersections, their worst curves and snowy conditions, and they're going to start putting transponders on those intersections and those curves that give warnings to drivers coming by that, you know, okay, it's an icy condition, we're measuring temperatures that are below 32, you know, let's issue a warning. Um, you're gonna see that coming in, um, starting with the worst accident areas and kind of working down from there. So I think it's gonna be a very valuable system that, you know, cities and states will be able to use as well as drivers will wanna add these systems to their vehicles. Well, and I can imagine, too, if you start to work in the vehicle miles travel type uh, mindset, that that could actually pay for some of those devices out there for the older cars, right? I mean, you know, devices that people would actually install themselves and, and maybe pay for as part of the vehicle miles traveled um, fee that they pay. Yeah, I, you know, vehicle miles traveled is a whole different topic, but, um, you know, I think there's a lot of ways that you could see insurance companies or others essentially incentivize people to add these systems. Maybe secretaries of state would say, hey, you know, if we'll knock a hundred bucks off the price of your car registration if you install this system and can prove you've done it on your vehicle, right? So everybody kind of wins in that scenario. The state gets a safer road system, the user gets a safer vehicle, um, and they get it at a discount. Well, and that's similar to the discussion you're having about who owns the data, and when, well, that was one of the thoughts that struck me, is what if the cities, uh, uh, you know, if there was some kind of discount for sharing the data for the city, right? Yeah, no, I think obviously cities are looking at ways to um, get revenue. They're also looking for ways to, to get data to improve the, the traffic and, and road congestion as well as safety. Um, I think those will all come together in ways that we may not even fully understand today that will improve the safety of the overall transportation system. Well, that's what makes this an exciting area. Everything is still right. new. Thanks, well, Brian. Thank you very much.